The tropics no longer quiet. September, as expected, will be busy in the Atlantic, but the big question is where are these storms heading? The latest models plus a meteorologist Q&A coming your way here on Tracking the Tropics, powered by Handyman Roofing. Hello there to you folks. Happy Wednesday to you. JB here with you in your hurricane headquarters alongside our trio of meteorologists, including WFLA Chief Meteorologist Jeff Berardelli, meteorologist Rebecca Barry, and joining us from ABC 27 in Pennsylvania, our featured meteorologist. Welcome back to the program. Addis Euclo. We're going to go over what we're looking at here in the center of your screen, but your meteorologist Q&A is coming up, up here in just a few minutes. You can use any of the hashtags around your screen. Hashtag Hey Addis, hashtag Hey JB, hashtag Hey Jeff, or hashtag Hey Rebecca to get your question answered about where things stand in the tropics. But we're going to send things over to the wall for meteorologist Jeff Birardelli going over the very latest. And Jeff, as we look here at Tropical Satellite, it's very clear that the <laughs> tropics are no longer quiet. Yeah, that is true. And of course, this really stands out, right? That system that we have in the central part of the Atlantic Ocean, which is the one that we've been watching for a few days. So I'm going to go over the maps uh, for the next, let's say, three, four minutes or so, and then we're going to talk to the rest of the meteorologists and start to answer some viewer questions. So this is a basin-wide view. I'll step out of the picture so you can kind of see what's going on. Nothing in the Gulf of Mexico, not much in the Caribbean, at least nothing that we expect to develop. But there are three systems. One there, that actually may have the best chance of developing in the near term. Uh, this one also has a high chance of development and then a little bit less of a chance, but good chance of development with that system emerging off of Africa right now. So let's take you step by step uh, through the National Hurricane Center outlooks on each one of these systems. So this one right here, again, it's getting better organized. You can clearly see there are more thunderstorms located around that X now than there were yesterday. It's a circle. Yesterday it was kind of strung out, if you will. The chance of development in the next two days, 60%, but in the next five days, around 80%. So it's a high chance of development. Now behind that, and we're not too concerned about this, it's headed in this direction to the west-northwest into the open waters of the Atlantic, but there's a 50% chance of development with that over the next five days. And again, this one also has a high chance, 60% in the next two days, just like the one to the south of it, and 70% over the next five days. Right now, it's a bit subtropical. It has a little bit of cool air uh, in its core, but it's likely going to transition to a tropical system. All right, so let's talk about uh, the spaghetti models and where we think the system in the middle of the screen, the one that re really jumps out uh, to you, is going to go. And you'll notice uh, to the west-northwest and then maybe a curve or likely a curve to the northeast once it gets to the Bahamas. So we're going to tell you why that's likely to be the case. It's not a definite. It's never a definite in the tropics, right? The weaker it stays, the further south that it's going to go. However, there's no big ridge of high pressure across the Atlantic. And we're going to bring Addison in just a couple of minutes to talk about that. But he was bringing that up to me uh, before we started the program. We were talking about that. So without there being a strong ridge forcing it west and due to the fact that we're going to see a front driving to the south, that is likely to recurve this out to sea. But again, you can never be too certain. Things can be sneaky, that's for sure. So that's the central area of low pressure. Most of the thunderstorms still on the eastern side here, so it's a bit of a lopsided system, but there's definitely more convection beginning to wrap around the center here. So it is getting better developed. It's been fighting off a lot of dry air over the last couple of days, but uh, that dry air is beginning to disappear. So notice there was a lot of dry dust air on its western side, but that is now moving quickly to the west and exposing this area to more moisture. There's less dry air, which means it's, getting better organized. You can clearly see that right there uh, with the thunderstorms around the center of circulation. So let's talk about the factors which are going to help or inhibit uh, the system. First of all, the dry air is moving out, so it has a chance to better develop itself. But notice just to its north, there is a decent amount of wind shear right here uh, over the next couple of days. And then once it finally, by the middle of next week, gets close to the Bahamas, there's going to be a front that's going to move to the south. And this is likely to just kick it out to the northeast, most likely. There's just the off chance that it's able to sneak a little bit further to the south, and then we'd have to worry about it a bit more. Uh, to compare recent seasons, yeah, this has been a really quiet one, especially when you compare it to what's been going on the past few years. In 2020, which was the most active season on record, 16 named storms by now. Uh, last year, very active, 12 named storms. This year, only three named storms. No hurricanes so far, but Rebecca was talking about this, and we're going to talk about this with Rebecca in a couple of seconds that it's not that abnormal to be at three, four, or five storms uh, this part of the season. Um, what's abnormal is that we're just used to much more active seasons lately. So one of the strange things is, and we expected this to really be a banner year again with a lot of systems. When I say we, I mean the whole meteorological community basically has been predicting an active season. 
because we have a lot of cool water in the uh, equatorial Pacific Ocean and a moderate La Nina going on. And typically, La Ninas produce around three times the number of hurricanes than El Ninos do. And in the Atlantic, it is warm almost everywhere here. And it, in fact, in the tropical Atlantic specifically, it is the sixth warmest that we've seen since 1982. So it's certainly not warm water that's inhibiting. There's plenty of warm water. But one thing that Addis was talking about uh, to me before, and we're going to talk about it with him soon, is this little area of cool water to the north, which could actually... Uh, be uh, causing the system or causing these systems to uh, to to really have a hard time uh, generating and intensifying and organizing. All right. With that said, I'm going to head back to the desk and we're going to bring Rebecca, JB, and Addis back into the conversation. Yeah, Jeff, why don't you come back over and we'll introduce Addis into the conversation. Addis, let's uh, send things right over to you. Uh, Jeff's conversations here about what's going on with 91L. Yeah, so it is uh, right now forming in an area that is uh, more favorable for development. Uh, and as we're seeing there on that map, uh, we do have plenty of warm water right now over as we call the main development region, uh, stretching over into the Caribbean as well. So it is expected that that system that's just east of the Lesser Antilles there will at some point develop as it interacts with warmer water. And as it gets past the Lesser Antilles, moves a little bit further to the north and west, there should be less in terms of uh, wind shear over that area as well. Now, the thing that's kind of been saving us, it's not just how quiet it's been, but the overall weather pattern has not really favored these storms getting close to the East Coast, at least not right now. Uh, you know, I know even up here in Pennsylvania, we're seeing the influence of that pattern where we're seeing these intrusions of drier and cooler air out of the north. And that basically shuts down that window of storms uh, to potentially move a little bit further west. So 91L, likely to continue north and west. It's going to be fighting some wind shear over the next few days, but eventually it will move into a little more of a favorable environment. But again, there's just not that pattern that's favorable for taking these things uh, closer to the East Coast, even Gulf of Mexico at this point. Rebecca, what do you think of 91L and the prospects for it in the future? I think it's about time that we saw something. Um, and like Jeff said, I opened up this morning, I opened up Facebook and it reminds you what you were doing on this day, you know, so many years ago. And I was tracking Dorian and I thought, wow, it, it was a D name that we were tracking that year. Mm -hmm. And so the next name on the less list is Danielle. And so if it were to form, it's actually about on time for an average season. We've just been so, our perspective has been skewed by such active seasons for the past couple of years, particularly those seasons where we had a lot of activity out in the Atlantic, where they named systems that only survived for 24 hours and remained out over the ocean. And so we we ran through names so quickly the past couple of years, but we haven't even seen those out there because of the unfavorable conditions in the Atlantic. We just haven't seen much at all. So forecast models are starting to get cranked up. But then when you look at the long term forecast models beyond 91L, because sometimes all you need is that first one to break the cap or break the seal, basically. And then it, you see a conveyor belt of low pressures rolling off the coastline of Africa. And a lot of times that first system makes conditions more conducive. It, it somewhat eradicates the drier air that's battling around. Sometimes it affects the wind shear and you get a lot weaker wind shear behind that first system. So sometimes the first storm kicks off a parade of storms, but it just doesn't look likely with this one, unfortunately. We've got a, a lot of systems out there uh, and a lot more to talk about. We want to get your questions and comments loaded up here on screen. It's very simple. You see the black stripes underneath our names all around your screen. If you use that hashtag with one of your comments, we can feature your of course, question and comment on screen, just like this. Use a hashtag, ask a question, your meteorologist Q&A powered by Handyman Roofing. Uh, starting here with David Fassel, hashtag HJB. Hey this has been a quiet year for hurricanes, but he mentions also here as well that this isn't the first quiet year, Jeff, that we've had uh, tropical development. And, and I think you, you were noting before we began the stream in our pre-stream kind of meeting, you were mentioning something that we're approaching a record between named storms. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I think so. Tomorrow, I think that if we get to tomorrow uh, without a named tropical system, we will tie for the longest streak in between named systems. So Colin was the last one. Danielle's the next one. Uh, so that's quite a feat for sure. Uh, Addis was bringing up 2013 as being a year where the uh, sea surface temperature pattern was similar. Now, Rebecca was telling me that 2013, we had something like 15 named storms. So it wasn't uh, a slow season, but there were only two hurricanes during that season. And so in many ways, forecasters consider 2013 kind of a dud season because although there were a number of storms, they weren't, they weren't hurricanes. 
As we as we look here at these invests, uh, people will commonly say that all it takes is really one bad storm to define a hurricane season. Is are, are any of the disturbances that we're talking about here anything remotely close to what we'd be talking about as that kind of storm? Mm -mm. Not at all. Not at all. Nowhere no, close. and I don't think any of them at this point would even make landfall anywhere uh, close to the continental U.S. So that's the kind of busy Jeff. That we want. That we like. That's what we want. We don't mind if storms are in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Fish storms. Fish storms. We Fish like storms, it. as we call them. Inconsequential. Um, and that's and actually that's pretty common during September. You can see that map right there. How everything kind of uh, you know the biggest development zone, the biggest track zone is in is in the Atlantic. A lot of them miss the U.S., which is what we like. And this and this pattern <laughs> that we're looking at as we all kind of bang the desk here, tropical development for September. Uh, and you look there at that area of red, most likely that looks almost exactly mm -hmm. like right. the yep. spaghetti models yep. that we have for 91L. Uh, let's get to this question from Stacy. Again, use any of the hashtags on your screen to ask a question. Uh, having a softball tourney in Lakeland, any chance that any of this will mess it up? So we can clearly say it doesn't matter if you're in Lakeland, doesn't matter if you're in Miami, it doesn't matter if you're on the Panhandle, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas. Uh, nothing to worry about with these systems as of, as it stands right now, Rebecca. No, that's correct. Uh, 91L will not impact Lakeland or any of our areas. 91L is going to make that curve back out towards Bermuda. So unless the tournament gets moved to Bermuda, you guys are good. However, summertime thunderstorms are still in full swing here. And so that would be your most likely uh, interruption to your softball tournament in Lakeland. But of course, you can turn the lightning indicators on on your Max Defender mm -hmm. 8 app. It warns you you get a 15 mile advance notice if there's lightning near you. So that's one of those situations I recommend you turn on your locations for and those and that within the app but it's also important obviously to stay ready as lucia here tells us keep informing people for emergency preparedness like what to have at the ready what's the short list guys real quick we can remind our viewers we talked about this a lot on previous episodes this year the short list of things that you should have for september now september is officially here as of tomorrow mm -hmm. so what should people really have on them of course, you've got your batteries. You want to have any medications, anything like that. You need to have that plan for the pets as well. You need to know your evacuation zone. You need to know your plan. If you do have to go, you don't have to drive to Atlanta to avoid the storm. You can drive to your friend's house or your aunt's house that's a few miles inland and out of that evacuation zone. Mm -hmm. Anything else to add, Addis, Jeff? I, I like having battery backup power. So I have like a little little battery here, which has outlets, USBs, and you can plug in devices just so, so just so that you have, obviously it's great to have a generator if you can have one, but not everybody can have a generator. And by the way, if you have a generator, please put it outside. Do not put it inside. You don't I, want carbon monoxide poisoning. I also know, you, just, you, yeah, Addis, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, staying informed. I mean, this is the time of year you got to check back. Uh, September is peak tropical season, so stay tuned to your local meteorologist. Stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center. Always have your plan ready because these things can develop quickly, and we're in that time of year that we really still have to mm -hmm. watch out for it. Yeah, and you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens come October because that's when we would be most concerned here in Tampa Bay on the west coast of Florida. Uh, when systems come directly at us, it's because they have some steering flow that can push them you know, towards the east. And um, and so that if this if this season ends up being backloaded, which basically means most of the systems have on happen on the backside back half of the season rather than the first half, um, that poses a greater risk to the west coast of Florida because systems that are in the Gulf in October have more of a tendency to curve towards towards the east. And there's plenty of warm water in the Gulf, and none of it is being used by storms in the Gulf and haven't been so far this season. Um, so we will see if we end up with a favorable pattern or not come October. There's no way to know for sure. Uh, but certainly one of the things that we would have wanted to see is some of that warm water kind of used up and, and it's all just sitting there. It's all just potential energy uh, that could potentially fit us. Addis, you know, I want to talk more about, so I'm glad Rebecca brought this up. So you were talking about this distribution of temperatures with the, the cooler shades uh, in the subtropics to the north of the Cape Verde Islands and, the, and you know, warmer down in the intertropical version. I mentioned, and this is from Phil Klotzbach, this is the from CSU, Colorado State University, this is the sixth warmest that the tropical Atlantic has been, so there's no excuse. It's plenty warm in the tropical Atlantic, but something weird is happening with that cool pool of water to the north. Yeah, it's, it's a little unusual, and this is something that we really haven't seen, I think, in quite some time, at least not to this extent, and I feel like this has really started to 
uh, manifest itself more here in recent weeks. So yes, it's warm. You just talked about how the tropical Atlantic is the sixth warmest since 1982. But to the north of that, north of Cape Verde, there's this little cold, or at least cooler than average pool of water that stretches all the way up off the coast of uh, Portugal and Western Europe. So this cooler than average water, keep in mind, this is still warm water, but we're talking about anomalies, we're talking about relative to average. So cooler than average waters that extend from along the northwest tip of Africa up to Europe. And what this has tended to do is allow for uh, really this, this unfavorable setup of storms that are coming off of that main development region. And the warmest or the highest uh, temperature anomalies where the water is highest above normal is actually well to the north and west, uh, east of Canada or off the coast of Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so, blocking so that. Adam, sorry about that. Yeah, that's OK. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the dipole that we're seeing of warm water up to the north, very warmer than average water. Yeah, you can kind of see it north, uh, just cooler. on the top side of the banner there. It's incredibly yeah, exactly. warm off of in the North Atlantic, incredibly, incredibly warm. But the Gulf of Maine is warming faster than almost any place on Earth right now. So that is that's weird, weird currents and, and weird things are going on now that the climate is kind of changing. Uh, but I, I still think, you know, there's a lot of so you so this is what we talk about. We talk about wave breaking, you know, and essentially the jet stream during the during the winter time, which, you know, anybody who follows weather at all, you know, the jet stream does this undulations during the winter. We're seeing more of those undulations this summer. And I think that the cooler water there is either a product of that or it's helping to kind of, you know, uh, intensify that type of pattern. But every time you the jet stream does that and it gets into the tropics, it pushes, you know, little bits or batches of dry air down south. And it also, by the way, brings brings wind shear. So dry air has been above normal. Wind shear has also been above normal. Not incredibly. Neither one of them have been incredibly above normal, but both at least slightly elevated. But still, I think everyone, you know, in the meteorology community is just scratching their heads saying, OK, yeah, but should it be this quiet? So there's a lot we, we still have to learn, right? Yeah, for sure. And a couple of things, uh, and I would mention this to you before we started. So we look at analogs. So analogs are basically looking at, okay, what's happening right now? And in previous years at this time uh, that we had similar conditions, what ended up happening? Well, it's interesting. Based on that sea surface temperature uh, anomaly and where all those warmer waters and cooler waters are, the top analog that actually shows up is 2013. So mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense that, you know, that's evidence right there of why this has led to uh, lesser activity this season. And, you know, it's interesting, especially this time of the year now, as we look at long range models, the GFS, even the Euro, when you get out past seven days, we call them fantasy storms that they tend to spin up, mm -hmm. right? They're fantasy storms because a lot of times they don't actually happen or they do, but it's something different. It's in the wrong location. It's too strong. But, you know, just looking this morning and even the last couple of days, there's not a whole lot of fantasy storms, mm -hmm. if you will, being projected once we head beyond these three systems. So, again, that's not saying we're not going to have any storms here in September after these three disturbances. That's not what I'm saying at all. But the point is, I think it does say something that even out into the long range, into the peak now of tropical season, not seeing a whole lot of further storm development in the long range, that is a sign that something just hasn't been right this hurricane season. And that reinforces what Rebecca was talking about. You were saying that, you know, when you look in the long range on these computers, you don't, computer models, you don't see these storms. And in, in, indicative of the fact that it's just, uh, you know, likely an inactive, another inactive pattern that's coming. But by the way, there is, there's a, a climate cycle that's going to be cycling through. It's going to last for about a week or so that mm -hmm. you're going to have sinking air and stuff. So I don't know what's going to happen after that, though. It'll be interesting yeah. to see what happens in the middle of September. And I think that a lot of us are thinking that because it has been so quiet so far, it has to kick off at some point and mm -hmm. it has to, we have to see that uptick. And so that's when you think about possibly October being the busier month for us this year. But if it does ring true, like 2013, another thing that was really interesting about that season, the last system we tracked was in December yeah. of that mm -hmm. season. Okay. So it wasn't, we didn't see any major categories Three hurricanes are above. We only saw two hurricanes total, but the last tropical storm that we were tracking was December 7th. So really yeah. late in the season. This one here from wow. Brody from the WFL Facebook page, hashtag hey, Rebecca, do you think the wave train will get going and systems begin to form? I think you, you called them a conveyor belt yes. earlier. Is the conveyor belt going to 
not with this round. I mean, that, that's just what Addis was just talking about. The fantasy storms or the conveyor belts not cranking up in those longer term forecast models. Um, you know, meteorologists probably plan their lives a little bit differently than anyone else. We're certainly not going on vacation in September because we're used to being called back to track these types mm -hmm. of systems. And the peak of the system is the middle of September. And so we're nearing that peak. And even on the long term forecast models, we're not seeing that conveyor belt set up. That's not to say it won't happen. The reason they're called fantasy storms is because things change change drastically when you're looking at a forecast for 10 days beyond what you're looking at right now. But usually you start to see hints of that conveyor belt going on the on the long term forecast models and then they start to come to fruition. And what's not happening with this storm is it's not kicking off that conveyor belt or that parade of storms. Another odd characteristic of well, it's not even really all that odd. It's just it, just a characteristic with this season and previous seasons as well is the amount of storms that kind of popped up and then fizzled out very, very mm -hmm. quickly yeah. and sometimes hours or days. So Audrey is is commenting here, hashtag KJB, what happened to the storm by by Cancun in the Keys? There was a system that we were, or, or a, as you would call it, it a wannabe system. That was the first, that one. Was the first one that Potential they kept Potential Tropical saying, Cyclone 1 or whatever it was called. Oh, I'm, I think they're talking about that area that we talked about might go into the Gulf. The GFS continually showed that development oh, in the yeah, Gulf. Oh, yeah, that was just, that was a real fantasy storm. The GFS, the American mm -hmm. model, just made that up. And, but it's good that you have meteorologists like ourselves to be able to say, no, 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 GFS, you're not fooling us. We knew that was going to be a fantasy and it wasn't going to happen. I mean, th there was a disturbance there. It was weak. And, and one of the other models correctly, the Canadian model, correctly pushed it into the Pacific Ocean. And I, I don't know if it's developed yet or it's probably going to develop soon. So that was the question. The G For some reason, the American model pushed it north and developed this big hurricane in the Gulf. So, yeah, uh, that was a fantasy storm. But... But to, 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 to what Addis was talking about and Rebecca was talking about, we've been in a favorable pattern for these seedlings, these waves, these disturbances to develop. That's been the case for about the past week or two or so. We're about to get into an unfavorable pattern in a few days, and that's going to last through the first week of September. So I'm not surprised the computer models are not spinning up fantasy storms in the next 10 to 15 days. What will be interesting to see is what happens after September 10th, around that time, or maybe slightly before, right around that time, once we get back into a more favorable pattern, is the Atlantic still incredibly hostile to a generally, when I say favorable pattern, I mean the background is favorable for these seedlings to form, these, these disturbances to form. The problem has been that the weather has been unfavorable, meaning the wind shear has been strong, the dry air has been strong. So even though these disturbances have been aided by a favorable pattern for the past couple of weeks, they get into the Atlantic and they just <laughs> slam into a brick wall, which is what's, what's happening with a lot of these systems. How about this one? We'll uh, make this perhaps one of the last comments that we have from our Facebook Live comment section for meteorologist Rebecca Barry from Amber Shavers on the WKRG Facebook page. Do you think that we will have some major hurricanes uh, come to land this year? Hey, Amber, that's a good question. I wish I knew the answer to that. I would be much more wealthy than I am. Um, Historically, yes. Historically, we've usually seen a major hurricane make landfall in the U.S. Um, certainly the past couple of years, that's been above average. Um, and all of the f indications leading into this season for long-term forecast models did predict several major hurricanes, and so it would be likely for one of them to make landfall. That being said, with the new information that's emerging, I've got my fingers crossed for another 2013 with no major hurricanes. Mm -hmm. that's, what I'm, that's what I'm going for. I think we could all do it, right? Can, can that would be wonderful. Can, I we, mean, all discuss, can we screenshot yeah, sure. us all with the with the fingers, <laughs> fingers crossed. Can we get some fingers crossed emojis out there for those watching in our Facebook Live comment section? Uh, we'll end out on on two things. Uh, this is the last uh, edition of Track in the Tropics before the busy month, before September. The next time that we join you guys, it will be in the most hectic, historically the most hectic month of the year uh, as far as the Atlantic uh, hurricane season. Remember, Track in the Tropics is live every Wednesday at 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central, or when storms form. And, of course, I want to end out to thank our featured meteorologist today, Addis Uclo. Give him a follow, folks. Addis Uclo at ABC 27 Meteorologist up there in Pennsylvania. Addis, the final word is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, JB. It's always fun being here. I enjoy talking about this stuff with you guys. And I guess the only thing I want to leave off with is, you know, despite all what we're talking about, you know, these storms staying out to sea, that uh, a more unfavorable pattern now as we head over the next seven to 10 days, 
you know, that distribution that we look at, right, where the most active part of the hurricane season is early to mid-September, that distribution does not always happen that way. So, you know, I know everybody kind of expects everything to just gradually ramp up at the end of August and just go crazy in early to mid-September. But honestly, it does not happen that way. You know, we have our more active periods. We have our more quiet periods. So even if we don't see anything that land, threatens land here over the next uh, two weeks, that does not mean we're out of the woods yet. Uh, and, and we also mentioned how in 2013, we had storms as late as November and December. So we have to keep our guard up uh, right through October and right through the end of hurricane season. Uh, but certainly it is a good sign that it has been this quiet so far because what it means is less of an opportunity or at least less of a window now for things mm -hmm. to really ramp up. And we will, of course, keep a very close eye on the tropics with Addison, our entire team across Next Star Nation. We're here live in your hurricane headquarters every Wednesday, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central, whatever app, website, or social media platform that you are watching on, ready to go live at a moment's notice when there is a storm forming that you need to know about. I'd like to thank, of course, Rebecca thank and you. Jeff and Addis joining us all the way up there in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Folks, we'll see you next time in September. We'll see you in September on Tracking the Tropics, powered by Handyman Roofing. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics.